It's time now to bring in Arthur Schwartz, the food maven. That is right. On a Monday morning, we get together with Arthur, uh, and uh, we talk food. And, of course, uh, uh, we say good morning to the man that makes our day complete at 734, Arthur Schwartz. Good morning, Arthur. That's so so nice of you to say. So on this cold, cold November morning, (laughs) (laughs) um, I'm thinking along the right line. I have lately been fixated on short ribs, and uh, which is you know one of one of these cuts of meat that you really need to cook long and slow, and uh, you know turn on the stove for hours and hours. So it's a good on a cold morning. It not only heats the kitchen, but it sustains you later in the day. Truthfully, I like to cook short ribs one day and eat them the next. They somehow I feel improve in whatever liquid, because they have to be cooked moist, uh, they're in. So that said, my first, this all started with my cousin Susan telling me how she can't find fatty enough meat. So, and I had to agree with her, and I think I've already talked about this on the air, and I made this Guinness stew, uh, produced a great gravy, but the meat itself was, you know, who cared? Uh, It was edible, Um, meaning, you know. You're not going to waste it. Yeah. However, I then thought, hmm, if we're really looking for fat, a good place is short ribs. And there are short ribs, and there are short ribs, and some of them are actually, I think, too fatty because they're not inexpensive. And by the time you get them to be tender, uh, so much fat has rendered off that there's not much meat left. So the first, it, 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 I want to tell a little story because I was reminded of this the other day when I was telling Bob about somebody we know who, you know, who used to cook, and these days doesn't cook that much, but she also doesn't like to go shopping. And Bob said, "I thought it all starts with shopping," and I told him this story once again. Uh, I don't know how many years ago. 35 years ago, I have to look, I could look this up. It was the first uh, 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 City Meals on Wheels Gala, then held in Rockefeller Center in, in, in the outdoor area where the skating rink is, except so it must have been in the spring when the skating rink wasn't there. It is because Beard's birthday is in early May, so it was in early May. And, you know, it was chefs from all over the country coming to give one dish. These events have become very common these days, but then it was something new. And Alice Waters was one of the guest chefs from Berkeley, California. And by then, uh, even then, she had a reputation. And these other chefs gathered around her booth, let's call it, and said, oh, what are you cooking? And, And she showed them, and it was just fingerling potatoes baked in the oven with a little oil and water and thyme. And they said, oh, that's not cooking, that's shopping. And she said, oh, so you get it. I hope you're laughing. Anyway, (laughs) uh, it's all about shopping. So shopping for short ribs, you have to look for those that have some meat on the bone, so to speak. And, of course, they're going to be full of fat as well. But you'll see when you start looking at short ribs that there's a big difference um, and, of course, it depends on, let's start with the cow, with the cattle, uh, and go on to uh, the part of the breast that this meat is from. So, anyway, uh, uh, look for ones that ha- are meaty. Now, you, you may not find uh, short ribs uh, uniform in one package. You know, all the supermarkets have put everything under cellophane. But rustle through the packages and and find the good ones. And if there's one or two pieces that aren't that meaty, it's okay. I had uh, to make my uh, uh, short ribs braised in Guinness, that's stout from Ireland, Um, dark, dark beer. I I had three pounds of short ribs, uh, which was nine short ribs. And... Most half of them, at least, were really big, hunky pieces of meat on a bone, and the other half were less so, less meaty. But it was enough truly for, I have to say, 
two two ribs per person is is more than enough. And if I had nine ribs, that's four people. Uh, for Bob and me, it was two days of eating. So there you go. Anyway, um, sort of no matter what you do with short rib, uh, other than cut it off the bone and make it Korean style, marinated and grilled, bulgogi, uh, you have to braise it. Because even though the meat is extremely succulent, once it's cooked well, it's not, uh, 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 an, you know, it has to be cooked in a moist atmosphere. So I brown them very well. And one of the problems with my, my Guinness stew that I made several weeks ago was that Stew meat, as bought in the supermarket, was cut too small um, and wasn't fatty enough either, but cut too small so that by the time you got it well browned all over, it was cooked through. It wasn't you know, ready to go into a pot and cook for three more hours. So the short ribs are big pieces, and they will brown nicely. Don't, don't put flour in, just a little bit of vegetable oil at the bottom of the pot. They'll render off enough fat after a few ribs. Don't crowd the pot, as we always say, because then the meat starts sweating instead of browning. And do it over medium-high heat. Don't be afraid. Uh, to do nine ribs, I did this in um, uh, my five-quart uh, Dutch oven, and I was able to fit three, four, pie four pieces, really, uh, at a time in, in the bottom of the Dutch oven. Once it's all brown, remove the meat. You're now going to have a lot of browned, uh, uh, but not burned. Be careful. If you see anything starting to get too dark, lower the heat, and then keep turning the, the, the meat so that it does brown on all sides. And this takes seven or eight minutes, by the way. So um, when the meat is brown, take it to the side, do the rest of the meat, and then... If there's a lot of fat in the pan, toss out all but a tablespoon or two of whatever fat is in there and add two cups of, this is four or three pounds of short ribs, two cups of diced onion. That's two medium onions, two medium, two five-ounce onions. And uh, scrape the bottom of the pot. The moisture from the onions it's themselves will, of course, uh, help deglaze, help lift off that brown stuff on the bottom, which is called in French a fond, F O N D. And it is the base, fond means base, the, the, the base of a good gravy. So uh, uh, scrape it all up with the onions, let the onions cook seven or eight minutes, they will become uh, tender, and then uh, 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 add. 12-ounce bottle, well, it's actually 11-point-something-or-other-ounce bottle of Guinness, um, and continue to scrape up the bottom until it's all nice and clean and, and the Guinness is, is bubbling away. And then add, put the meat back, along with, I, you know, I measured this a few times already, a pound of carrots scraped and cut into two or three-inch lengths. The, 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 the fat end can be in shorter lengths than the, the, the long end, I mean the tapered end. Uh, it could be one, one carrot short, but, you know, these days I'm putting in a whole pound of carrots and then a whole pound of parsnips, also cut into very large pieces. Um, you know, some parsnips are, it could be a couple, three inches across the base. Well, it's not really the base, it's the top. Um, uh, and then you have to cut in half and then a crosswise, but whatever, big chunks, because this is going to cook a long time. My seasoning, besides salt and pepper, it, and I put a, a, a good amount of pepper in and salt. Uh, what's a good amount? I don't know, at least a teaspoon of salt. You'll probably add more later. Um, and I salt the meat before I brown it, too. So it, it, this is, you know, it takes a lot of salt in the end. So you'll add a little salt later. And pepper, at least a, I would say a half teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, and uh, a, a, a bay leaf or two, and um, I would say about a tablespoon of fresh thyme stripped off the stems, you know, so it's just the leaves of the thyme. If you're using dried thyme, which is fine, uh, maybe a, tea, a, a rounded teaspoon is probably enough. And what else? 
and then the meat, the, the liquid will not be covering the meat. So add, you know, nestle the meat in. It doesn't have to be separate. Nestle the meat in so that it, it's uh, compact-ish, and pour in enough beef broth to uh, come up just, just, just to the top. Uh, bring it to a simmer on top of the stove. And then I like to cook this in the oven, uh, 275 degree oven, a low oven. At that temperature, my short ribs last week took mm, an hour, no, I'm sorry, an hour, three hours and a half. I usually figure three hours, but at three hours, and these were not done yet. And how do you know? You can either poke with a two-pronged meat fork, and if it slides right in, it's tender, or use the, the, the point of a sharp knife, just a little knife, and, and you test it that way. I mean, if you're really insecure, you can pull one out and cut off a piece, but I don't think you have to be so insecure with this meat. <clears throat> it's not like you're trying to catch it at medium rare on the rare side. <clears throat> anyway, you want this very well cooked. In the end, um, and by the way, there are a lot of different ways you can cook short ribs, of course. Uh, this is just because I wanted to make that Guinness stew again, and, um, and, I, and I didn't really want to use stew meat, so I used the short ribs. In the end, I decided uh, with the short ribs here um, to thicken the gravy, to, and I used cornstarch. It's my new thing. Because I think it's sort of British. The, 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 the English woman who sat next to me in the dining room on Queen Mary 2, uh, we got to know each other and each other's cooking. It's, although now that they're both retired, she doesn't cook and he does cook. So, but she, she told me about Guinness stew. Because we, we ate it. At, there's a pub restaurant on board that had better food than the dining room, um, including this Guinness stew. Anyway... I thickened it with, uh, for every, now if you have, if you, let me say the second night that I made it, I had cold, it was cold from the refrigerator when I went to reheat it, and so I had cold uh, uh, um, juices from the, from the short ribs, so I used that as my cold liquid. Usual directions are water, cold water, two tablespoons of cold water for every tablespoon of cornstarch, and that's enough to thicken a cup of liquid. So I figured I had a little over two cups. I didn't want it too thick. I used two tablespoons of cornstarch and uh, 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 four tablespoons of water, quarter of a cup of water, and I mixed that together with the fork and poured it into the simmering stew, and you let it and stir and let it simmer for about a minute or so, and you won't feel the thickening like you would with flour. Um, I like it. Um, and my table mate uh, on Cunard uh, uh, apparently thickens everything with cornstarch. Not a bad way. It's an old-fashioned way. That's it. Uh, salt and pepper, of course, you have to adjust at this point. Now, fat. So this is something you make it a day ahead, if not two. For one reason, if you make it a day ahead, you let it cool to whatever temperature you feel comfortable with, I, I do let my uh, foods cool to room temperature before I refrigerate them because mm, I don't have a super-duper cooling refrigerator and I don't want to put a hot pot of stuff in the refrigerator and have it work overtime to cool everything down. Anyway, so I let it come to room temperature and then refrigerate it. And the next day, you will be able to skim off a significant amount of fat. And it, it will be hardened fast. And so it's not difficult. You it's a happy a, inch. A, 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 just a table. I use a big soup spoon. And I keep it hot. Um, so the, after, you know, I'm, I'm a little skimming, uh, I put it under the hot water and to get the fat off the spoon. Where but do you put the fat? The hot spoon also helps in getting the fat off the, the sauce. 
Where do you Sorry, put the Jill? Where do you put the fat? I I I, I Where do have, I put the fat? Yes, I have loved skimming ever since I was about. It, 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 I could stand <laughs> it. My it, so my grandmother it used to get on me. The uh, fat. Right. Okay. So she used to get me a stool. It depends. For instance, uh, I made some chicken broth recently, and I skimmed the chicken I call soup fat off the soup, and I have used that. Um, I used it um, to saute some onions to make kasha varnishkis. Boy, was that good. What about ribbon? Um, and I used it to fry some, well, they weren't fried potatoes, but I, I'd made baked potatoes, okay. and I split the potato in half, and I had like literally two tablespoons of chicken fat left. And it's a sputtery, it's a wet fat. It's, 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 there's a lot of moisture in it because it's soup fat. So you put it in the pan and wait till. And it'll sputter. But then you put the the baked potatoes uh, uh, cut side down in the yeah. pan and finish them off that Oh, my way. goodness. I, I, mean, I only did it because I didn't want to waste the chicken fat. I understand. And what about beef fat? And then do you, do you ultimately chuck it? I, I always I, regret not when I waste that chicken fat. Right. And what me, a, I'm sorry. What about short ribs? And I think we, should, we have to tell people. So the short rib fat I throw away. Okay. And it's you, too heavy. And you throw yeah. it in the bin, right? I, I know more people... I just like remind well, you. I don't know. You know, when when nobody's looking, I <laughs> I run the hot water and I put it down the drain. But I don't have a septic tank. You know, I have city plumbing here. And uh, and uh, fat burger. So, uh, what are those things called? Those monsters. You, you know, so- I'm trying to remember. I, I guess when I did have a septic system in Connecticut, I I did save the fat and would throw it in the garbage. Right. Somehow, plastic bag or something. But we didn't put it down the drain. That was too dangerous. And it's just something to be aware of. Uh, along, along the way, um, and this is unfortunately graphic for Monday, uh, for, for first thing in the morning, any morning. But along yeah. the way, people have uh, just really started pouring, not only pouring their fat down the drain in cities, but um, using non-degradable uh, toilet paper, for example. They've been using baby wipes and stuff. And oh, the, yeah, that's no good. No, it's terrible. I only and learned recently that that uh, tissues for your nose are not made to, to um, disintegrate. disintegrate in water, whereas right. toilet tissue is. Right. Okay. Now, that's obvious because if you blow your nose and it's wet and it disintegrates in your hand. Let's get you, back to yeah, yeah. food. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, it may be obvious to you, but it wasn't to me. <laughs> no, I, no, but, but I'm, ju- I'm just... Let's I, get back to food. We are. We are. We will. We have oh, yeah. To- let's get back to food. I agree. So... Speaking of skimming, yes. <laughs> and what do you do with the fat? I decided I, I, I have now I have I'm well stocked with homemade chicken broth in the freezer, yeah. and I'm uh, it, making this Guinness stew. I hated the idea of using packaged beef broth, um, even though I did, but I also bought meat to make broth. Usually, I make beef broth with neck bones, as meaty as you can get them, and they often are on sale in the supermarket for some crazy low price. And so then I buy, you know, five pounds of neck bones and just throw them in a pot. Well, no, I don't just, for beef broth, I don't just throw them in a pot. I I roast them first. But in any case, this time I bought oxtails because they were on sale. And oxtails, of course, Mm. have a real high, they're very gelatinous. So I made an, an oxtail broth, but on the recommendation of several people I trust that I consulted in books, they always say, oh, you can find everything on the Internet. You cannot find everything on the Internet. There are, there are days where I'm so happy I, I have a good library, even though I'm still trying to sell off a lot of books. In any case, I consulted, and so many people, uh, good cooks said, oh, you have to put a, 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 a veal foot, a, a calf's foot, or um, a pig's foot split in with the oxtails. Why? So, so I was able to buy a big pig's foot in my supermarket <laughs> for $2 and change. And I thought, what the hell? So I did that. And I end up, it's only this morning that I... Oh, well, I skimmed it before I put it away because it was so much fat from the oxtails and, and the, uh, 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 the pig's foot. By the way, 
I, I, ox, I eat oxtails in restaurants, and I don't cook them. And now I know why, because... It's expensive. It's also it's <laughs> to also oxtail. it's also a, I paid like twenty four dollars for four something pounds of oxtail, and in the end, I only have uh, only this morning I did the final skimming, and I'm right now as we speak bringing it to a simmer, and I just tasted it. It's good, super duper gelatinous, but the flavor is 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 just okay, and I think I'm going to actually cook it down a little bit. Um, but anyway, that produced so much fat that I used my one quart. It's called, it, it, it has a brand name. I think it's called Super Skimmer. But it's, a, I would call it a gravy separator. Right, that, those things that you... You own one of these? Yeah, they never work for me, but that's because I'm useless. No, it worked. This works. Okay. It, it's, and, this whole, it, and it holds... Um, I have many... Oh, at have, least two cups, more than two cups. Yeah, and you can get and, big and, sizes. And, pardon me? You can get big sizes of them. The yes, you can. I have I have one you would put on the table. Although I'm not sure why I would put a sauce on the table uh, not, that has so much fat that needs a separator. But anyway, um, but I have them. I have them in several sizes, right. and I have a one quart. <clears throat> so uh, the one quart, I must say, I, I I threw out a lot of fat, and then I refrigerated this, and still this morning. I went to went. I opened it up and it needed another skimming, and I probably took off another, I don't know, third of a cup of fat altogether, which I did indeed um, let go down the drain with a lot of hot water running. Well, you're a good person. It, 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 with hot water, it's liquid. It's, it, and then I put coffee grinds in it a little later. <laughs> It's down the drain because they're supposedly helping to keep it, the drains clean. I never have any problem with my drains, I've got to say. So I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, it's, a, it's certainly a day to uh, make a soup, um, if not a stew. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this nice gelatinous oxtail broth to make a soup. All right, now two quick questions. Any suggestions? Uh, yeah. Uh... Go ahead because I can sip the soup now. No, you can sip this. The, you, the biggest problem with beef broth is that mm-hmm. in many cases it has tomato in it. Not mine. <clears throat> I understand. If you purchase beef broth. If you purchase beef broth. Yes. Actually, I have, a, I have a box here. I don't like these products in general, but I thought I should keep one on hand in case of an emergency. Right. And, so, and I don't like the fact that they have sugar in them. Right, Exactly. So and um, uh, wait, I'm going to read the ingredients. This is this is Kitchen Basics, which is a major brand of, uh, and it's their organic beef stock for cooking. And then I laugh because it says gluten free. Yeah, uh, everything is gluten free now. Vodka. I went into a a, a, a store frequented by uh, uh, former Soviet nation people. I don't even know what to call them anymore. They're all Russian speaking, but they're not Russians. And they have a whole, of course, they have an entire vodka section. And many of the bottles were, had tags on them that said gluten free. Okay, ingredients organic beef stock, which contains water or, or, and organic beef stock, organic beef flavor, whatever that organic beef flavor means, some extract. Organic evaporated cane syrup. There you go, sugar. Right. Sea salt. Um, organic cane sugar. Organic onion powder. Organic natural flavor. Cooked organic vegetables. Carrot, onion, celery. Um, and it goes on. The garlic powder. Organic spice and herbs. See, at this point, this is... I don't trust any of this, by the way. Bay leaf, organic thyme, misspelled with an I. You're kidding. Organic tomato paste, there you go. Yeah. Organic molasses and organic potato flour. Okay, guys. So that's what's in a box of beef stock. Well, in my beef stock, my oxtail broth, but you you know the expression lip smacking good? Yeah, yeah. I am now smacking my lips no. because there's so much gelatin it's so in this good. broth 
that it's sticking to my lips. And the last, I, I, I now remember, the last time that I had this experience, it was making, ah, Jill and Marshall, you'll remember this, the Coach House. Yeah. Coach House right. Restaurant, which is now Babo, um, uh, a former Mario Batali restaurant, still owned by the Bastianich. Um, that location was the most famous, quote, in quotes, American restaurant in New York in the day. And they were super famous for their black bean soup. There we go. Maybe that's what I'll do today. I love black bean soup. And I do remember you start off with an incredibly gelatinous broth right. to make this black bean soup. It's not your everyday black bean soup, which I do make, by the way, when you, uh, but I don't use broth for it. So, um, so yeah, that's an idea. I think. So this is lip smacking good. I, in my broth, it was just bones, which I roasted, uh, 450 degree oven, um, for about 20 minutes, along with the carrots I was going to use for, for uh, uh, what did I have, like four pounds of uh, oxtail, I used uh, two sort of biggish carrots um, and two smallish onions cut in half. Uh, threw all that, just like that, no oil, um, in, in, the, in a 450-degree oven for 20 minutes. Tossed everything around, turned the meat over um, and uh, the bones, the oxtails. And did another 20 minutes. And by that time, everything was browning. I uh, put all that in a stock pot, a big pot, with, with the carrots and the onion, of course. And then I added two big ribs of celery cut into chunks. By the way, the carrots only have to be cut up into like in half or in thirds. And uh, enough water um, to cover everything. And that was it. Oh, to extract gelatin from bones, add a tiny bit of vinegar. So I added a tablespoon of vinegar. Oh, yes. And, of course, the pig's foot that I bought. What's that, that was for? was in there, too. And then I, and, and I covered it with, very well with water. Uh, did I, put any, I put some bay leaf in there and uh, had sprigs of thyme. I put that in there. And that was it. Salt and, and peppercorns. And um, I let it roll. These are oxtails, mind you, not beef neck bones. I would let go for at least six hours. Uh, besides that, I wanted to leave the house, and I didn't want to leave the flame on under the pot. My oxtails cooked for three hours. When, by the way, the oxtails were still very good to eat. We ate the soup meat, so to speak. Um, there wasn't a lot of it. Um, out of four pounds of oxtails, there was enough meat to barely make a portion for two people, but uh, could we, I didn't nibble on the, the, the tapered part of the bone. I just, we just ate the, the hunks of uh, base meat, for want of a better word, and it was good. So now the broth is here, and, I, and, and just talking to you, I realize I should probably turn it into black bean soup, um, a recipe which, by the way, is in my New York book, New York City Food, has the iconic recipe from the coach house. All right. So Marshall is winding So us Marshall up. is, yeah. <laughs> Actually, he let us go an extra two or three minutes. Yeah, he did, and now he's... Now he's... Thank you, Marshall. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So anyway... I, All right. So I, I anyway, have... my, my, my broth is just about coming to a simmer, um, and I will adjust the salt and decide what to do. All right. I'll and, report next week. And we will be like drooling. also on the new apple cake. <laughs> I told you last week yes. I was <laughs> I'm all about apple cake. I found another recipe to make and it was really good. Next week. All right. Next week. Love Take to Bob. Care. Thank you. Arthur Schwartz, the Food Maven, here on Robin Hood Radio. Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the Food Maven, John Andrews Restaurant on the Hillsdale Road in South Egremont, 413-528-3467, and on the web, jarestaurant.com. Rubiner's Cheesemongers and Grocers on Main Street in Great Barrington, 413-528-0488, rubiner's.com. Hillsdale Home Chef, more information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com. Robin.